Hello viewers, welcome back. We are now looking at sensitivity analysis part two. So what we want to, to do now, first of all, connect this first table right here for the enterprise value. This first table here for the enterprise value. Now, we want to connect that first table for enterprise value and we make sure that we have these other values gotten from that same value. So, so we want to get all these other three from, what, from that column. In other words, what we are looking at is we are looking at a situation of getting this these values, these tables here, these ones, and this one, they are all supposed to be gotten from connecting these values, these values here. So we need to first work on this first table. And after working on it, then the values that we have, they are the ones we shall use to put in those, in that putting in some in that, in that table and also filling that table. So we need to see how are we going to be able to have that in place. So let's go ahead and look at how we can be able to have those in place. Now, the way that we are going to do this is we, we are going to use what we call data table functionality. In order to get this working, if you haven't used the data tables before, I think you are going to be quite impressed with how these data tables work. It's a really powerful tool inside of Excel because it gets things done very fast. First thing we need to do to get the data table working is we need to think about what exactly is going to be inside this first table. What is going to be inside this table here? That's the first thing for us to think about. What is it that we want to be in that first table? Inside that table, that first table. Well, Inside this table, we are going to show the enterprise value. So in here, we are going to be showing values for enterprise value. Inside there, we are going to be showing enterprise value. We can call it EV, enterprise value. We are going to have those values under a bunch of different circumstances where we are changing the growth rates. We are going to be changing these terminal growth rates and at the same time changing the weighted average cost of, cost of capital. That's work. So we are going to have different EVs or enterprise values that are going to be in relation to these changing values on the vertical axis and on this side of the horizontal side. So the values that we are going to be having inside these cells, they are going to be, first of all, having one terminal value, sorry, the terminal growth, and at the same time, they have a work. So those are the things that we are going to look at. In other words, these enterprise values that are going to be inside this cell, they are going to be varying with the different weighted average cost of capital and the terminal growth rate. So since we are going to show enterprise values inside this first table here, what we are going to do, then we need to link the enterprise value 
in this corner right here this corner here is where we are supposed to put our enterprise value because that's the corner of cell it is cell c89 that is that is highlighted in gray it's the one that is going to be the meeting point for those two values so that's where we put the value so let's see what we can do but let, let's firstly move this now we are going to go into this cell we put there the enterprise value that's where we are going to put our enterprise value that cell c89 so let's get started and see how to do things here so the first step is really simple we are just going to put in an equal sign in this cell c89 then we pick that value up there for enterprise value in this cell right here let's move this is where our enterprise value is in this cell d81 so we put in that value there so we can see the enterprise value is right in this cell here now next thing what we are going to do is select the entire table so we select the entire table but we are not just going to select this insider area here we are not we are not only going to select this area here the inside part alone no we are going to select the entire table and we have to make sure that we include this this very item that we've just put of that cell c89 so that's the enterprise value where the enterprise value is and at the same time we have to highlight these these terminal values and at the same time we highlight these values that are both on the y and the x axis so we are going to move we are going to start moving from this point from cell g81 sorry from cell c89 that's where our enterprise value is we are going to highlight we are when we are going horizontally on the axis hold down the shift key then use the right arrow to highlight going from c89 then up to h89 and then we are going to move downwards c89 up to this one of 94 there so we've highlighted the whole table so now that we have selected that area we are going to need to activate what we call data table function so we are going to tap alt alt key that's it will take us to the menu section and now we are going up here into the data section here for a so we hit a for data section a for data section and now we are going to go all the way across over here to the forecast section this side this is the forecast section within the data section of the ribbon in other words the forecast tab of the data section of the ribbon so we are going to go to this w right here for what if analysis so we can see the w for what if analysis so what we are going to do we tap w for a what if analysis now finally you can see right down on the bottom here we have data table so we are going to tap t for data tables and now this little dialog box right up here it has come up for us 
Now, the computer is looking for two things. The row input cell and the column input cell. It's really easy to get these two mixed up. For the row input cell, the computer is really looking to know where it can go to change the terminal growth rate. And for the column input cell, it asks or it wants to know where to go to change the work, the work rates. Now, for the row input cell, our instincts probably is to select the terminal growth rate that is over here. Because this is, this is where we've gotten the, the value, that we, the, these values that we have here. You may find that our instincts are going to be landing on changing the values here for the terminal growth rate of 2% in that cell G79. But the problem is that this particular cell G79 is not driving the model above. In other words, this value that you are seeing here, it is only driving the models that we are in. But we want something that is going to drive the model above, that is the DCF schedule. So we are going to find the actual cells which drive the model above in the next schedule. In other words, we've picked these values. Where we've picked these values is where we are going to pick those two values because it will be those cells that will be driving the model, this very model. Because when, when the, other, the other one changes, even these ones are going to change automatically because these are just link, link, links. We've just connected them. So the point here is that we have to look for those actual cells which drive the model above in the next schedule. So what we can select for now, especially for the row input cell, we can go up here. Let's try to use the mouse and we try to move up here in the in this previous section that we were in and we are going to pick these these cells here so we are going to go to these assumptions because these are the assumptions that may change that's why you're seeing these are hard codes they are the ones if they change even the model down below will change so it means these ones they are the ones driving the the, the schedule the next schedule that we are doing we are working on so what we are going to go is we are going to pick this value here for terminal value that is g 40 49 that's what we are going to pick for the for the raw input cell just like the way the word is suggests input it's supposed to be an input it's not supposed to be a value or a calculator a formula value and then we can now go and hit the tab key because we want to move to the column input cell now for the column input cell remember this terminal growth they are the ones on the horizontal axis the ones that are on vertical axis they are the ones we call column input cells so hopefully you can be able to get to those same ideas. It's also going to be this very number here, G50, which is the column input cell because it's the one that is on the horizontal and it is an input. So if we change that, even the model below will actually change. So that's why we are picking only the assumptions because those assumptions they come as hard code figures. So what we are going to do, we can now come and hit enter. From there, you will see that as if we've done nothing because nothing you are seeing on the screen, they are changing. But let's go down to what we 
to where our tables are and you will actually be able to see what happened so let's go down to our table now as you can see from our table here everything is now filled up it has been filled out so you can see all the different enterprise values depending on the terminal growth rate and the work inside that first table so it is inside this first table for enterprise value so we have everything in here being filled up as you can see all those values are now filled up which is a faster way for us to get those values in by just using data tables now it's possible that the values inside that cell or inside, inside that table for enterprise value it is possible that those values they may not actually match they may not match what you see on your video right now because if at all you've done you, you were following us and you were going through doing the same thing like the way we are doing them you were supposed to be at this point where we are now if you downloaded the, the, the template early and you started doing these computations the challenge is that you may find that the values you are seeing on the on your video here right now as you are watching they may be different to what you have in your excel sheet so that will be a problem but it wouldn't be your own problem it, it is actually the problem is with your excel settings because we went through the excel settings in our first course so you can go back and recheck what we discussed on excel settings but it may be from that point so and that could be because there are some excel settings all settings within excel that we need to investigate maybe let's try to take a look and see what we can what could be the problem if at all you don't have the same values as you are seeing there no now we can also get into these settings from our menu without us using the mouse we can actually just get into our menu and now we use it we use the keyboard to make sure that we go to that to, to that side of the excel settings so like we did before we can go and tap alt key now you can see up here on your left here top left here we have f for file so we can now go all the way and tap f for file now it's going to take us to that backstage view so from this point we are now going to pick we are now going to pick the values from we are now going to tap because from the bottom here you are seeing more meaning if you click there there are very many things that are going to open up so you can tap t t for more options and now t is taking you to those options that we have there now from here you can use the tab key you can use the tab key because we've seen this dialog dialog box it has come up for us to actually navigate through so now what we are what we are what we can do in this dialog box we can use the down arrow to move to get into this formula section here now if you are in this formula section and what you are what you want to see here is that you are set to automatic from this first point here from this first one calculation options you have to make sure that you are in automatic if you were you, you were set here down to this second one 
this one automatic except for data tables on that second one then your data tables would not be updating by default and if you are in that last option here manual manual mode then you would need to hit f9 you have to hit alt tap f9 in order to have those things recalculated for you for the data tables so let's make sure that we are all on automatic workbook calculations automatic then we can now hit enter so now if you've made that adjustment in that excel settings now that you've you've finished and you came back to the you to the data tables that we have there and you check some of these values what we have in here and what you still have on your on your screen or from your laptop of what you've been doing and you check that and you check that same table and you see maybe some of these values are not matching then it may be that there is something also we need to to check out but for now since we have we have done we have made changes to the excel settings and now we are back in the data tables let's try to do some check of some of these values to make sure that we are that we have everything correctly so we can try maybe to look at this small small value this one is the smallest here 108 is the smallest in cell b94 so we want to see whether those values here in this d94 match the largest up here because the largest is in this this cell h90 we want to see whether those are actually matching now if they don't match then it means there is also something else that we might want to investigate if your numbers are not matching with what we have because this is how it's supposed to be the smallest has to be on this side and the largest is supposed to be on this side if that's not the case then just know there is a problem secondly if you see that even the numbers themselves in here maybe this if you try to investigate the numbers and you see they are not the same like the ones you are having right now then you just know there is also something that we need also to do an investigation about so if they don't match then we can try to do some investigation somewhere now other things you can check is you can check these values maybe you can check these values the value here f let's maybe let's go by f these values we can also check these values the two percent the two percent in here this one for the growth the terminal growth that terminal growth as you see it is in blue meaning it is in a blue font it should be a hard coded figure in there so you can just put in maybe you hit two you tap t then enter those are not supposed to be hard codes and even the value here for weighted average cost of capital they are supposed to be also a hard code 13.5 it's, it's supposed to be it's not supposed to be linked up so we don't want the work that is right up here in this cell c92 and the terminal growth rate in f89 to be linked up so if you have those two cells 
if you have those two cells as hard coded figures, this one of 2.0%, 2 the 2%, and the 13.5%. For terminal terminal growth rate and the work respectively, and you find that even some of these values are not actually matching. Just know you've done a mistake. But if you have those values, they are hard codes, then you are good to go. So what we have to do now, we have to to we have now to move to the next video and we look at how we can be able to fill these other remaining parts because now here we still have this value here there is a lot that we can talk about in this value because this value here is the same as the value you are seeing in the in the middle here so we are going to talk about those values in the next video as we progress to these other tables as you as you can see because we said that first table is the one that is going to give us the information that we shall feed in these other sections. So the rest of the tables are now going to be quickly completed because we have done what was hard. So we'll see you in the next video as we are looking at those remaining sections. Thank you for watching. Those are the values that are going to be inside that, that, that shaded part. Now.